Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. I'm Stephanie, I go by StampJG here on YouTube and at my blog at StampJG.com. And today I have kind of a different video that's going to share a bunch of different tips and tricks on working with the We Are Memory Keepers Foil Quill Freestyle Pens. As you may know, I have done four videos with these pens and um, I did a detailed overview of working with them. Then I did three videos showing the different ways to use the foil coil freestyle pens called stencil, stamp, and sketch. Some of the comments and questions I got in those after those videos I wanted to share with you today because I think they're really great and we all can benefit. Some of those have to deal with what is the comparison of um, the foil quill pen and gold embossing. Or I come up with, what a, how about a marker? Gold markers, how does that look? In addition, um, does it work on fabric? Can we use the foil quill freestyle pen and the We Are Memory Keepers heat activated foil on fabric? Is it washable? Finally, I also picked up this um, accessory that is a magnetic ruler and a magnetic mat that will help us cut foil. And I want to put this into action to see if it is something that is helpful or who knows, maybe it's not, I haven't used it yet. So let's get started and dive into some tips and tricks. Okay, the first tip and trick I have is storage. This has been um, kind of the tough part about collecting all these cool tools is where do you store them? I have an iris or a recollections, I am not sure, 12 by 12 inch case here. These are very familiar to crafters and scrapbookers. And this turns out to be a pretty doggone good storage idea. It's an iris one. As you can see, it's big enough to fit the mat. It's big enough to fit rolls of foil, the 12 inch rolls, including the smaller foil and a bunch of other accessories that you would need. Let me also point out, in here I have the plastic tray that I used with the um, light. I've taken the batteries out of the light to use as a light table for tracing. And this little cool thing is a utensil holder that I got off of Amazon and thanks to my viewer from on Instagram who suggested looking for a silicone utensil holder on Amazon. This utensil holder has four slots and it's perfect for the four pens that come with that are in the freestyle pens. And this is Zule Kitchen. It's, I will link it below in case it's something you're interested in. The dimensions are approximately six inches square, an inch and a half to possibly two inches wide here on top, deep. So I've got all these either rubber band or I've got that Velcro cord management tape. And these fit in here nicely. And just about everything I would need can fit in this one case. It's very, very convenient. And when I take these out of the package, it'll be more convenient. But for now, just kind of. In addition, this is something else that I've found. Let me get this out of the way here. Something else I found, but I haven't really figured out where to use them in my search for something that has to do with um, storage. These are adhesive clips for pens. I will also link them if it's something that you're interested in. And they are little rubber. Let me zoom in a little bit here. And they are little rubber thingies, for lack of a better word, that are perfectly smooth on the back. And they come with a 3M adhesive pad that you could adhere to the back and then permanently adhere it to something. Um, I'm kind of toying with the idea of adhering it to a metal plate or something that maybe would be magnetic. I'm not sure. I haven't really figured out what to do. But these I will link because they definitely fit 
the pen. It does not fit real well way up here, but if you, you know, put it down over in this area beyond the color part of the barrel, you certainly could put this somewhere and it holds it pretty securely. And they come in this very high tech, <laughs> they come in this very high tech package, <laughs> just like that. It's exactly how they come. So that's kind of cool. We Are Memory Keepers has come out with a foil quill accessory that is a magnetic ruler with a mat, a little handheld rotary cutter, and clips that will make it easy to cut foil. I have not used this before. I am very excited about the idea of a magnetic ruler. It is a pretty gold ruler with white markings etched into it and it has a magnet on the back. Again, as I said, it's um, actually it's longer than 12 inches. It looks like it's closer to 14 inches. Let me see. Yes, the ruler itself from end to end is 14 inches. The little mat that it comes with is five inches wide by 14 inches tall. And it has these little clips, these little plastic clips that slide over the edge. And it's just a little smooth kind of cutting mat. And I'm guessing there's probably metal sandwiched in here somehow. I'm, I'm guessing that's what's happened. And these clips will hold the roll in place. And this will hold the foil down so that you could cut it with the little handheld cutter. That's the idea. Let's see how it works. I have a roll of black foil here, which I can't wait to use. It's so interesting. I have to have foil in all the colors. And let me just put one of the clips down. It slides over the edge. If you can see here, it slides over the edge and points inward so that the roll fits here and the next one slides over this edge let me put it in the mat first let me slide it down okay there we go so I have it on one end and I'm going to slide it on I'm going to put it the little bar into the foil roll and slide it onto the mat. So now it's in place on the mat. I'm going to pull out a length of foil and I probably could have done it under. This is, might be where you want to pay attention to where your foil is. And say I want like three inches of foil. So that's about three inches of foil to here. I'm going to put my ruler down and I'm going to cut. Just like that, I have a length of foil to use. And I'm guessing if I wanted to cut it, line my ruler on the edges so it's at least somewhat straight. And I could call it, cut it into smaller pieces if I wanted to. So here's my initial impression of this. This is really cool. I like it. I don't necessarily think it's necessary. I think it's, it helps you to wrangle the roll while you're trying to cut it. But what I would rather have seen here is some grid lines 
so I could cut it straight. So the foil does, the cutter does mark up the mat, as you can see here, and over time that will get scratched. I think that's pretty standard. But I think all in all, this is a great little tool, especially since now we have a metal magnetic ruler that we could use with our mat, our magnetic mat, if we wanted to. I will link this in the description below and I would, if you have this, I would love to hear your comments and thoughts on it. Again, it's not a necessary tool. I kind of like it, but you know, I probably could have rolled out the mat and put a ruler onto it and cut without it, you know, so I do like these. <laughs> it stays in place. Now if we can make one of these for wrapping paper. Let me show you this experiment. I wanted to see if the We Are Memory Keepers heat activated foil would work with a small craft iron. So they sell something similar. Um, it's in the section the section of the craft store where you do t-shirts and rhinestones and all that kind of thing. It's, I think it's meant to iron heat activated rhinestones on. I think that's what it's meant for. I have let this heat up and you can see some experiments that I've been trying. I have a scrap of foil and how this relates to using the We Are Memory Keepers foil quill pens is that you can see that this scrap of foil is where I traced a butterfly through a stencil and I had all this foil left inside of it and I was thinking if I could transfer that as a solid transfer it would be beautiful to have solid foil transfer. You can see how that's going. <laughs> I've tried a couple of things. I've tried first ironing on um, a piece of cardboard because I didn't want to wreck my surface and that's why you can see these patterns um, over and over again. I try to um, let it sit you know anywhere from 10 to 30 seconds on the foil to see if it would transfer. And so all I'm doing is I'm putting my iron down onto the foil which is on a a scrap piece of paper right now and I'm just letting it set for about 30 seconds. No, that's not working either. Oh, I got some more there. Oh, look it. I got a little more there. The only thing I'm ending up with is some very cool distressed looks, but nothing has um, transferred the foil in a solid manner. But boy, you could get some really cool distressed looks. Okay, this next tip comes from one of my viewers, and she said that um, she found that she got a better transfer if she put a couple of layers of copy paper between the cardstock and the magnetic mat, and the little cushion made a big difference for her. So I wanted to try that. I've got actually a piece of cardstock. So I figured we'll, we'll go for the, the cardstock. I've got my project piece and my foil. My next tip also comes from a viewer and she said that there is no real need to put tape along the edges that if you put it in the corners and pulled it tight that it held very well without wrinkling. So I am going to do that with this. So I have put a piece of cardstock underneath my project. I'm going to put my project on top and I am going to put tape up in my corner and then I'm going to put it in this corner here, touch it down lightly and then I'm going to kind of pull it so that's very tight and I probably could do that in the other two corners as well and because it's not held down because I'm working with a small space I'm going to use some magnets so let's see how the cushioning works underneath the project I'm going to hand write
another similar piece of card of foil and I'm going to take out the padding. I'm going to see if I notice a difference, which I think I'm going to because I did feel that it really felt a little more cushioned. It was kind of interesting. So. So I would say even though I can't really see a difference in the final project, this is where we had some cushioning and here's where I didn't and I put cushioning back here. You certainly can feel the difference when you're using the pen. It actually has a nicer feel with the cushioning. Um, I, I definitely recommend trying it to see if you like working on that type of surface. It works very nicely and I think um, using the foil, the tape at the corners actually does help to keep the um, tension on the foil in. So thank you very much for your tips and tricks. I appreciate it. And up next is working with fabric. For this next experiment, I want to see what happens if you try to put foil onto fabric. I've got a 100% cotton bandana that I've washed by hand with dish soap and ironed. I am going to put it down on my mat here and it's small enough that I really don't need all the magnets on it so I have the medium point freestyle pen heating up I'm using a cell phone adapter to power it and it's been heating up a little bit longer than five minutes I'm gonna say closer to ten minutes and I'm gonna to try to just hand write onto um, this cotton fabric and I'm going to slow way down And for the fun of it, I'm just going to draw inside this heart a box and try to fill it in. You can see that it transferred onto the fabric. And of course it didn't do well here where I tried to fill it in, but it, it doesn't do that well on paper either. It's the way, the nature of it. So first of all, it does scratch off. That's one thing that can happen. And I'm going to go ahead and try heat setting this a little bit with a hot iron and then I'm going to go hand wash it with some dish soap and that should tell me whether or not the foil will stay if you wash it. Now I don't know that it needs to be heat set. I'm, I'm just trying to give it a chance here. The next thing that I want to try is I picked up at Hobby Lobby some iron on foil. This is obviously heat activated and it's gold. So I'm going to try to transfer this foil onto the same purple cotton bandana before I go ahead and wash it. So I'm going to stick it down. And I just, my experiment here is to just simply to find out if the We Are Memory Keepers foil quill pen will transfer heat activated foil that's meant for uh, cricket machines and that kind of thing. And this is the Hobby Lobby brand. And my guess is not much of this transferred. So it was not hot enough to do that. The instructions say to heat it up. And of course this little craft iron is, is probably not get as much heat as I would like. But um, my regular iron actually died. I haven't used it in a lot of years and I went to plug it in and it went pop. And that was the end of that. 
So either I need a new one or <laughs> just stick to craft irons. <laughs> so let me. Interesting. This is a much thicker material than the We Are Memory Keepers heat activated foil. So I'm going very slow. So I went over it a couple of times. And we can see that it just isn't enough heat to do really well. So this pen cannot get through the thickness of the foil and the whatever adhesive is on it well enough to actually transfer. Um, it kind of gets caught on it and I'm you know I'm guessing that an iron would work fine Oh my. <laughs> yeah, it, it stuck. So the foil will transfer with the little craft iron, but I'm not having much luck transferring it with this pen. The foil quill foil has completely washed out. It is no longer there anywhere. Let's see if I can dry this a little bit. Okay. I have dried it a little bit with the iron and the foil is just not there. So that the foil quill foil will not work on washable fabrics. If you're going to use it on fabric I recommend a tighter weave and it be something that's not going to get a lot of wear. The foil quill pens, the freestyle pens, do not seem to get hot enough to transfer foil or heat activated vinyl that also did not work too well. So that was the experiment with foil quill and fabric. In one of my previous videos I showed how you could use the We Are Memory Keepers foil quill freestyle pens with stamping to give us really cool shiny gold foil with our stamped images. With this one I just wrote over parts of a stamped image that was in black and then with this one I never stamped the image onto the paper I just stamped it onto the foil and transferred it with a heat pen. So uh, there are many ways to add foil to your stamped images and I wanted to review some of the other ways just so that you could see um, maybe some of the different looks that you can get. So I've got a selection of products here. Um, I picked up two different markers. This is a Signo um, Gel Impact. It's a uniball. I got a Deco Color Paint Pen. This one happens to be an extra fine point. And this one um, I'm hoping will give us a shiny result. I'm going to use embossing powder and the embossing powder that I generally use is the Princess Gold by Ranger. And I also picked up something along the lines of a paint. I, I've never worked with this before. It looked interesting. Um, it was at my local Hobby Lobby. And it says, add the look of metal. So let's see how that compares. The paint, I don't think is going to work. I think it's just too thick and goopy. But you can see where the gel pen and the paint marker might work very fine. They've got a little bit of a shine to it. So, so here are some of the different looks that you can get with the same exact stamp, but with different gold mediums. Of course, this is the We Are Memory Keepers Foil Quill Pen. It's very shiny with gold foil. But it also has a sketchy hand-drawn look because we traced the stamp. So when you trace the stamp, then, you know, I picked some of the lines and made up some of my own lines here to give me the look of the stamp. Here is the stamp with black stamping, but I just chose 
different lines to trace with the foil quill pen. And then here's the comparison with the paint pen and the gel pen, if you were to write over very similar lines. I'm going to show way close. And they give a gold look, but they don't quite have the same metallic look. It's kind of interesting. Now over here, of course, is gold embossing, and gold embossing will give you all the details that the stamp designer put into their stamp. This just catches everything. It's a very beautiful, detailed stamp with raised edges and shiny gold foil, or shiny gold embossing, quite different from the foil, as you can see. But a perfect stamp Im stamped image too, it's not traced. And in here, um, this is Delicata ink in the corner here, and I stamped it again on white so that you could see a little more. I don't know what I got on my cardstock here. You can see a little more what that actually looks like when it's stamped on um, a white background where you could see it better. And it's still just a little bit wet, but it's a pigment ink. So it's, it's a pigment ink, so it takes a long time to dry. So I'm being very careful not to smudge it. So again, these are just some of the things that you can use to give your stamping products projects a gold glitz. And as stampers and paper crafters, I know we like pretty much all of them. <laughs> and there's a use for just about everything, depending upon what kind of project or look that we are going for. So thanks so much for joining me for this little experiment using the We Are Memory Keepers Foil Quill Freestyle Pen and some of the tips and tricks that you all have come up with that is really great and I so appreciate it. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them down in the description below and I will get to just as many comments as I can. I'm always welcome and open to hear um, your comments and suggestions and I appreciate you joining me today. I hope you'll stay tuned for another video coming soon. Thanks, bye.